ladies and gentlemen. My name is Steve Hawkins. I'll be serving as your Master of Ceremonies this evening, and I wish to take this opportunity to welcome you to the spring performance of the State Line Wind Symphony, conducted by Mr. Mark Collins and Mr. Scott Lambert. After the huge success of their premier concert in May 2012, they received many requests to continue the spring concert series, so this is the fourth spring concert for the group, and tonight the membership includes more than 100 musicians. We wish to direct your attention to the program that contains information about the State Line Wind Symphony, our special guest artists, and our special dedication to Miss Sarah Music. Also, note the participants' names and see what these musicians do in their everyday lives. Music can happen beyond high school. We know you'll enjoy tonight's performance. Dr. Jack Stamp is a professor of music, chairperson of music department and director of band studies at Indiana University of Pennsylvania, where he conducts the wind ensemble and teaches courses in graduate conducting. Dr. Stamp received his Bachelor of Science in Music Education degree from Indiana University, a Master's in Percussion Performance from East Carolina University, and a Doctor of Musical Arts degree in Conducting from Michigan State University, where he conducted and studied with Eugene Corcoran. Jack Stamp is an active guest conductor, clinician, adjudicator, and composer throughout North America and Great Britain. His compositions have been commissioned and performed by leading military and university bands across the United States. He's won the praise of American composers David Diamond, Norman Dello Joyo, Ron Nelson, Michael Tort, Samuel Adler, Robert Ward, Robert Washburn, Fisher Tull, Nancy Galbraith, Bruce Yurko, to name a few for the performances of their works. He's also a contributing author to the Teaching Music Through Performance and Band series released by GIA Publications. Stamp dedicated Aubrey Fanfare to the memory of Fisher Aubrey Tull. It is a celebration of his music and his wonderful gifts to the band world. Tull was a professor of music at Sam Houston University for 35 years. Stamp had the unique pleasure of studying composition with Tull in the summer of 1982, and he was an outstanding teacher and wonderful friend to him. And now, Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the State Line Wind Symphony under the direction of maestro Mark Collins, performing Aubrey Fanfare. Thank you. 
Martin Gould was an American conductor, composer, and pianist. He was recognized as a child prodigy very early in his life, and as a result, published his first composition before his seventh birthday. His talents led him to become the staff pianist at Radio City Music Hall when it opened in 1932. And he went on to compose movie soundtracks, Broadway musicals, and instrumental pieces for orchestra and band, while also cultivating an international reputation as a conductor. Among the honors he received, the 1995 Pulitzer Prize, the 1994 Kennedy Center Honor, the 1983 Gold Baton Award, and a 1966 Grammy Award. By the time of his death, he was widely revered as an icon of American classical music. American Salute is based on the patriotic tune When Johnny Comes Marching Home Again. Written in 1943, one can only guess it was meant as a morale booster during the uncertainty of World War II. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the podium for the first time this evening, Mr. Scott Lambert conducting Morton Gould's American Salute.
Stardust is an American popular song composed in 1927 by Hoagy Carmichael, also known, of course, for composing Georgia on My Mind. The lyrics were added to Stardust in 1929 by Mitchell Karish. Carmichael first recorded the song at Jeanette Records Studio in Richmond, Indiana. The lyrics are about love and the melody, a distinctive Carmichael melody with a medium tempo that's become an American standard in more than 1,500 recordings. In 2004, the original Carmichael recording was chosen by the Library of Congress to be added to the National Recording Registry. According to Carmichael, Stardust came to him while he was walking on the campus of his alma mater, Indiana University. While walking, he began whistling a tune, immediately rushed to the book nook, favorite place for students to visit, and started composing. Over the next several months, he refined the melody until its completion, and the first recording took place October 31st, 1927. Two years later, Mitchell Parrish published the lyrics, giving the melody to a new music genre. Over the course of several decades, Stardust has been recorded by great artists, including Billy Butterfield, Louis Armstrong, Dave Brubeck, Frank Sinatra, Dizzy Gillespie, just to name a few. We hope you enjoy the State Line Wind Symphony's version of Stardust. Please welcome Mr. Mark Collins, State Line Wind Symphony with guest artists Rick Simmerly and Joseph Trivet performing Stardust.
Par Redouble by Camille Saint-Saëns is a quick step march and is transcribed for concert band by Arthur Frackenfold. Paris-born Charles Camille Saint-Saëns was a child prodigy composing his first piece for piano at the age of three. He was a private student of Gounod, entered the Paris Conservatory at age 13. Saint-Saëns had total recall. Any book he read, any tune he heard, forever committed to memory. He held the coveted post of organist at the Church of the Madeleine from 1857 to 1875. He was also an, accompanied, an accomplished pianist, conductor, score reader, and astronomer. As a composer, his works include operas, symphonies, concertos, chamber music, sacred and secular choral music. His highly popular works, including Dance Macabre and Samson and Delilah, were written during a short and tragic marriage that included the loss of two of his young sons within a period of six weeks. The Carnival of the Animals is a favorite of children of all ages, but it had only two performances during Saint-Saëns lifetime, possibly because he had written it as a parody of some of the popular music of his time. Pas Redouble was originally written for four-hand piano. The tempo of a pas redouble varies with the proficiency of the performers, as well as the wishes of the composer and the customs of the period. During the mid-19th century, military units in some nations were marching to a cadence of about 90 steps a minute with a slow march, 120 beats per minute for the quick march, or pas redouble, and 160 to 180 steps for the double quick march. Arranger Frackenpole recommends a tempo of 144 for this march. The State Line Wind Symphony intends to play this march as fast as their fingers will allow, which will end with a rousing 180 beats per minute at the end. Please welcome back to the podium, Maestro Scott Lambert conducting Pa Redouble.
even go that fast in rehearsal. So. <laughs> there will now be a brief 10 minute intermission. So the, the 10 minutes will be the regular length, but the intermission will, uh, will be brief. Collection plates will be passed through the audience during intermission. Contributions sincerely appreciated and needed to make continued performances possible. And if you wish to make a donation in Sarah Music's memory, special envelopes are available on the table in the lobby for that purpose. You mail your contribution to the address in your program or give it to the attendant in the lobby. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. Brief intermission. If you see a Laura Vance, wish her please a tenth happy birthday. We'll be back in a few minutes. Joseph Wilcox Jenkins was born in the Philadelphia area in 1928. He started composing at a young age as part of his piano lessons. His future in music was uncertain at first. He studied pre-law at St. Joseph's College while he was also taking composition classes with Vincent Perchetti at the Philadelphia Conservatory of Music. But composition was his calling. He went on to two further degrees at the Eastman School of Music, where he studied with Howard Hansen, Bernard Rogers, and Thomas Canning. Soon after finishing at Eastman, he enlisted in the U.S. Army, where he became an arranger for the Army Field Band. Doctoral work at Catholic University followed, then another stint in the Army, this time as head arranger for the U.S. Army Chorus. He joined the music faculty at Duquesne University, where he remained until his retirement in 2000. American Overture was Jenkins' first work for band, written in 1953 when he was 25 years old. It came about during his first military stint as an arranger for the U.S. Army Field Band, where he composed the piece to match their instrumentation. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to the podium Mr. Mark Collins conducting American Overture.
Kenny Christofferson is a freelance composer living in Winnipeg, Canada, who focuses on composing choral and instrumental works and also teaches music and English at Lord Selkirk Regional Comprehensive Secondary School. Christofferson writes, all things come down to my most intense passion, telling stories. The stories bind us together, teach us about ourselves and the world around us. They shine the light into the dark corners of our hearts and minds, revealing that which has been hidden with or without our knowledge. Phylum vitae is Latin for the thread of life. According to the composer, it chronicles the emotional connection between humans and other complex life. We all need love, comfort, care, and food, among other things. We're all threads in a great tapestry, and while there is strength in diversity, we need to remember that we're more similar than we are different. We aren't the coach of the team, we're another player on it, but we're privileged to the benefits of being on such a team. Emotional connection, love, passion, we are part of the many, and there are fewer things more beautiful than that. The tapestry of being is made by the threads of life. Please welcome to the podium Mr. Scott Lambert, conducting Kenny Christofferson's Phylum Vitae, The Thread of Life.
Larry Neek is an internationally recognized composer with more than 100 works for concert band and jazz ensemble published by C.L. Barnhouse Company. As a composer, he has been commissioned numerous times to write for concert band, jazz ensemble, and orchestra, and often works as a guest conductor and clinician. Annually, he receives ASCAP awards for his compositions. In addition to composing, Mr. Neek teaches instrumental music in the Webster, New York Central School District. He directs concert bands, jazz ensembles, and is co-founder and director of the Willink Middle School Student and Parent Band. Concerto for drum set and concert band starts with an impressive rock section in the style of Sandy Nelson, full of energy. The second section is a delightful jazz waltz, which spotlights the use of brushes, a la Joe Morello. The finale, a bold up-tempo swing section in the style of the late Gene Krupa. A moment to thank Sabian Symbols for their continued support of our educator artists tonight. Let's make welcome to the podium once again, Mr. Mark Collins, the first, in conducting concerto for drum set and concert band, featuring soloist Mark Collins, the second, on drum set.
Alfred Reed was born on Manhattan Island in New York City on January 25th, 1921. His formal music training began at the age of 10 when he studied the trumpet. As a teenager, he played with small hotel combos in the Catskill Mountains. His interest shifted from performing to arranging and composition. In 1938, he started writing in the radio workshop in New York as a staff, composer, arranger, and assistant conductor. With the onset of World War II, he enlisted and was assigned to the 529th Army Air Corps Band. During his three and a half years of service, he produced nearly 100 compositions and arrangements for band. After his discharge, Reed enrolled at the Juilliard School of Music and studied composition with Vittorio Giannini. In 1953, he enrolled at Baylor University, serving as a conductor of the symphony orchestra while he earned the Bachelor of Music degree in 1955. A year later, he received his Master of Music degree. And his interest in the development of educational music led him to serve as executive director of Hanson Publishing from 1955 to 1966. He left that position to become a professor of music at the University of Miami, where he served until his retirement in 1993. And after retirement, he continued to compose and made numerous appearances as guest conductor in many nations, most notably in Japan. At the age of 84, in 2005, Alfred Reed passed away after a short illness. A Sacred Suite was written late in 1961. The full score was completed in September 1962. It is dedicated to the Purdue University Symphonic Band and its distinguished director, Professor Al G. Wright, who directed the first public performance as guest conductor of the Coral Gables High School Band at the Midwest National Band Clinic in Chicago in December 1962. Special mention should also be given to, Dr. to Mr. William Ledoux, regular director of the Coral Gables High School Band, for his generous assistance in preparing this work for its first performance and finally, to the church and chapel choir of the Seventh and James Baptist Church in Waco, Texas, whose devotion to and understanding of this music and choral performance first suggested to the composer the possibilities of treating this lovely music at greater length and in its present instrumental form. Let's pause for just a moment for Mark Collins to present a small gift. program about Sarah Music. Sarah was one of my students, and she was full of life and full of joy, and she brought a lot of joy and happiness into many lives. Philem Vite talked about the thread of life, and Sarah sowed a thread of life in many of us. All of us up here got to know Sarah. She was on the board of directors and was just an integral part of the State Line Wind Symphony. So this evening, we want to dedicate the next song to her, and Steve will speak about that. But in addition, we want to give a copy of the score cover for Philem Vita with our signatures on it from the State Line Wind Symphony just as a symbol of our love and to draw attention to the way that Sarah indeed was the thread of life to everyone that she came in contact with. I would be remiss before I present this if I did not tell you what was most important to Sarah, and that was her relationship with Christ. She made sure that every person she met knew that. So we hope that you have enjoyed this concert and that you truly enjoy the last number. And it's very fitting and it fits very much her thread of life. And so now we want to give this to her mom. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's performance of a sacred suite is in memory of Sarah Music. When we get to the chorus, feel free to sing along on Battle Hymn of the Republic. Sarah was a member of Clarinet's section and board of directors of the State Line Wind Symphony, and we hope you enjoy our presentation of this musical arrangement that paints a perfect picture of her life. 
Now, featuring the combined choirs from Euclid Avenue Baptist Church and Fellowship Chapel under the direction of Mr. Jeff McReynolds, and the state line Wind Symphony under the direction of Mr. Scott Lambert, Alfred reads a sacred suite.
And now we'll take a brief seven-month intermission, <laughs> which, believe me, will go by a lot faster for some of us than others. Please mark your calendars now. The State Line Wind Symphony's Christmas concert on Monday, December 14th here at the Higher Ed Center at 7.30. For more information regarding membership and other information, please visit statelinewinds.org. On behalf of the State Line Wind Symphony, I'd like to thank everyone for coming to tonight's concert. Concerts such as these are not possible without your continued support and appreciation. Thank you. Have a good evening.